Welcome back, Raider Nation, to the Raider D podcast today on a nice and sunny, hot Saturday here in the West Coast. Hope everybody is doing good. Uh, about to be joined by my partner in crime, the one and only Hot Beavers. Salute to you, brother. How are you doing? Salute. Hi. How y'all doing today? Happy to be here. How you doing, Raider D? Man, better than I deserve, better than I deserve. Uh, Just, you know, waiting for some football. We got, uh, this is kind of the slow part of the season as everybody is on vacation, including the players and the coaches. And Mm -hmm. so um, just kind of wanted to talk today a little bit about how OTAs and minicamp went, um, how we're looking with some of our rookies that we brought in as well as free agents like Christian Wilkins. The title yeah. of this um, live stream is So Much Hate Fuels a Beast, and we are talking <clears> about <throat> Christian Wilkins. And so there's been some articles that have come out by ESPN, Bleacher Report, you know, yep. the same old hate on the silver and black, where they're saying Christian Wilkins isn't worth $110 million. Christian Wilkins All of a sudden. is, yeah, he's going to be a regret for the Raiders and surprise, a let down and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I was watching Sanjeet, uh, a video by him yesterday as he addressed this, did a really good breakdown on Christian Wilkins' numbers. Uh, last year, overall, he was ranked 11th uh, as a yeah. defensive lineman. He was actually ranked ahead of Max Crosby. And wow. including... Chris Jones. And so Chris Jones is making three dollar uh, three million dollars a year more than Christian Wilkins, yeah. and he was ranked ahead of him. Now, I, I just want to be clear that first and foremost, with the Miami Dolphins, Christian Wilkins was the best defensive lineman, and so he was much in the likes of Max Crosby with the Raiders, where he got all of the de- the, the double teams. In fact, last year the stat was out of 900 snaps, he had 330 double teams. That's quite a bit. Wow. That's one third of yeah. his snaps. He's being double teamed. Um, and when he's not double teamed, that's where you see him wreaking havoc uh, in the backfield. One thing I did really like about these stats, too, though, is that Malcolm Kuntz was ranked number seventh overall. Really? Yeah. Which is Good really, really interesting. And, and so they, you know, it's a combination of a whole bunch of different factors from mm-hmm. run defense, uh, uh, quarterback pressure, sacks, um, double teams, not double teams. Like there's a whole bunch that goes into it. But gotcha. that makes sense. you have now top 15 on our defensive line, three Raiders on that list, top 15 across the entire NFL. And so for anybody to hate on the Raiders and say that the Raiders are not going to be good this year, the defense is overrated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just like, come on, man. Number one in points allowed and turnovers under Antonio Pierce. Yeah. That's not overrated. That's that's just a fact. Um, And we got better. So, you know, the the whole – it, it's amazing to me how great players become uh, overpaid as soon as they become Raiders, right? Um, you know, Seth Wolder wrote that article in ESPN, said that the, his, the worst move was us not trading our best player. For Devontae Adams or, Ma- or Max Yeah, Crosby? Devontae Adams, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we're just supposed to quit on the season before it gets started because we're the Raiders, correct? It's a, uh, it's stunning some of the stuff that you hear from the media. Um, so that, yeah, it's, it's it's good good reason to be here. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm putting together a an article right now, just kind of um, that I think is going to be really informative. That that goes over just kind of the, a lot of the assertions that the national media is making that are ridiculous, that are not not. Uh, founded in any sort of facts. Um, We have a top defense. We have, you know, top playmakers uh, at the skill position. And then, you know, we have a quarterback who on any other team would be seen as, you know, an ascending player who finished the season 
you know, eight touchdowns, one interceptions, had a stellar preseason, right, um, and has the pedigree and, and tools to be, you know, a, a very effective starting quarterback who can, you know, make plays and be accurate. Um, you you put that with a good defense, and you're not talking about a rebuilding team, which is kind of what they're acting like we should be. You're talking about a team that's contending um, and trying to take advantage of what we have. So it's just uh, – they're they're pretty far off, which is normal, right? Par for the course. Yeah, I do just want to make a quick clarification. Um, so, uh, let's see. one second. So, when I when I first launched the live today, it had the old title from an old video, um, and so this is not about Josh Jacobs. If if you originally seen the the title come up. Uh, Josh about Josh Jacobs. That is not what today's live is. Um, so it's just my it's my software that I use for streaming. I forgot to change the title on the software, and so it automatically populated it into YouTube. Uh, we are talking today not about Josh Jacobs at all. We are over Josh Jacobs, done with that whole situation. Um, so today we are talking about Christian Wilkins and the Raiders overall, just being disrespected. Uh, so many times. So double or uh, zero seven hog dog. Sorry for the uh, confusion there, my friend. This is not about Josh Jacobs. Uh, Seventeen point four points per game. <clears throat> That's what the defense was giving up under Antonio Pierce. Seventeen point four. And if you look at, uh, I think it was the last four games we were sixteen. So we were number one in the NFL in the last four games, four or five games. We were number one, only giving up 16 points on average per game. Um, so, yeah, I, I think um, it's it's one of those situations where the big networks, the big, you know, uh, podcasters and talking heads like Chris Sims and on and on and on, uh, Mike Florio, they don't have a lot to talk about right now. So here, let's just tear down the Raiders and uh, Christian Wilkins' contract. Um, yeah. These same dudes before, and if you go back and look at their videos when they're talking about Christian Wilkins before top the ranked. free agency, free agent, right? He's top three defensive tackle on every one of their boards. They're hyping him up. Any time that any team that gets him is going to have a massive upgrade. Blah 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 blah. And then you see how quickly they change their tune. Off season, vacation time, nothing else to talk about. Let's make a controversy about the Raiders because we got nothing better to do with our lives. My my thing would be Mike Florio, Chris Sims, ESPN, Bleacher mm -hmm. Report, all of you guys, go take vacation, man. <laughs> oh man, you know what? No, actually, don't. You guys make my job easy. Thank you for giving me content. That's right? that's true too. Because they're always going to talk about us, it. right, yeah. and give us something to do. So yeah, thank you. I mean, yeah. I don't think they're they're not doing stories about the Browns. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I just I think we're going to get this sort of hate. Uh, it is what it is. But um, I'm more interested in the fact that we have a solid team uh, all around. I mean, look, we were the top 15 offensive line last year, like objectively, and then we got better. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about whether a quarterback who looked promising at the end of the year is going to develop or not. That's that's a uh, part for the course in NFL, right? I mean, that's what you most most teams are, are are trying to do that, right? And the first thing that everybody wants to talk about is the struggles of the offense, as though all the offenses in the NFL aren't struggling in OTAs and um, mini camp, mm -hmm. because all, especially when no. you have a new offensive coordinator and a new offensive scheme. That's really when the defense is going to feast. They have an advantage in OTAs, and they have an advantage in the mini camp uh, over the established quarterbacks, even like Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. would hear about in OTAs and mini camps of them getting picked off and offense not clicking right yet, everything else. The, the difference really comes in because even if you have the same coordinator year over year, they mm -hmm. still make changes. You have to make changes to your playbook. 
Otherwise, you're going to lose every single game because every defensive coordinator is going to be like, yeah, I know that play, I know that play, I know that play. Right. And so they yep. change verbiage, they change audibles, they change plays. So even if you have the same coordinator, quarterbacks have to learn new verbiage, new audibles, new plays, and so does the rest of the team. And so yep. they all struggle uh, to a point at the beginning of the off season. Where they start to gel is in actual camp because – the smart offensive players, quarterbacks, receivers, linemen, etc., they're taking that six-week break and they're studying the new playbook as they're enjoying time with their family and whatnot. But they're they're mm-hmm. taking time out of their day every day. And for all of the hate that is going against Aiden O'Connell, um, remember this dude mastered the most complicated verbiage playbook of any offensive scheme in the NFL. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I believe he made it even more complicated when he came to the Raider because he had the little man syndrome and he wanted everybody to see how smart he was. Um, Aiden O'Connell was able to master that as a third stringer. Yeah. Hop in yeah. there and you didn't see yeah. him confused. Now he no, it, commanded he, the huddle. Yeah, he was able to command the huddle. He knew every single play. He knew where the, the ball needed to go. Um, Mm -hmm. he struggled a little bit, his first few games, like any rookie would, but the fact that he was able to memorize that playbook gives me so much confidence moving forward that when he gets to regular training camp, Aiden O'Connell's going to have Luke Getzey's offense down pat. And here's a lot of things I've seen in the comment sections is Luke Getzey was a failure in Chicago. What makes you think he'll be successful in the Raiders? Night and day difference in the quarterback. That's the difference. You have a dude who went to Purdue who is uh, like a 4.0 student, a guy who is extremely cerebral and smart and hardworking, uh, who who doesn't have all the physical talents to to just fall on. So he has to rely on his intelligence. Um, Luke Getzey hasn't had a quarterback like that. He's never had a quarterback like that since Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. And yeah. remember when he was the play coordinator, that was Green Bay's very that was their best year under Aaron Rodgers ever. Exactly, ever. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to make that point is that they were they were top 10 I think in like rushing in and passing that year. Um low turnovers. That was Aaron Rodgers' best year. So he was really successful in Green Bay. What makes you think he won't do that again, right? Um so yeah, I think you have to to judge the circumstances based on on what they were. I mean, go back and look at the Chicago, you know, Bears roster. Look at the progression of what happened with Justin Fields. Um, you know, the from year one, coaches, coordinators, and all that good stuff. It's it's a it's a story. It's not just one one piece that you could, that you look at, right? Um, and then I did a breakdown on Getzy's offense. Um, you guys can go take a look at which will literally show you the kind of play types we're going to be running and, and all that stuff. We are um, perfectly situated to execute that and, uh, and make plays that way. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, I think that's going to be one of the major uh, storylines is that, um, yeah, I, I think the, the whole idea that we're not ready um, – to move forward and, and push for a playoff run is, is overplayed by the media and everybody get one of those Mad Max uh, shirts and posters. I got mine sent in and it's dope as hell. Um, fit comfort, you know, dry fit down here in Vegas is a must cause you know, it's a little, little hot. So um, the poster will be going up in the background here pretty soon here. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where's the poster? Yeah, you, gotta get you the know, it's been busy. Right? Like I had, I had the bur- I had a birthday, some stuff, you know what I mean? Things been going down. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll have some time to get that set up. But yeah, it's going up. The Mad Max poster, <clears throat> which is dope. It's actually bigger than I thought it was. So that's pretty tight. Yeah, it is a full size mm-hmm. poster. Uh, so if you guys want to go and get those, everything is on sale right now. Uh, the T-shirts. We had the Father's Day sale that you could have got them for nine ninety nine, which is below what it even cost me to have them made. Um, and so a few people did take advantage of the Father's Day sale. The price has gone back up, but it is still on sale. We have extended the sale. It is 64% off right now at only fourteen ninety five, I believe. So go and get your mm-hmm. T-shirts. We have large and extra large. And I've gotten a lot of questions about that with the T-shirt first. 
uh, and foremost. I'm 220 pounds, guys. This is a large, and you see it fits me nice and loose. It's not too tight. It's not too small. Um, I also had the manufacturer make them a little bit longer because I cannot stand belly shirts. Wow, man. Um, yeah. And so yeah. these these are if you leave them untucked, they're going to come down past um, your your waistline. So they're really, really nice. And the other thing, too, is this is my actual brand. This is our company, Black Rain Official, that produces these. So these are actually manufactured for our company. These are not some cheap print on demand garbage that you see on other channels that are like thirty nine dollars. And the reason why they're selling cotton T-shirts with like four letters printed across them for $39 is because they're only making like $2 off of those print on demand. Cause the print on demand companies are charging like 36 bucks, uh, to send them out. We actually have these in stock. We ordered hundreds of them. So we have them in stock. Mm -hmm. You typically get Makes them different. within seven days, 1495, go get your shirts, large and extra large. If you are like a normal shirt, if you're like a two X or a three X an extra large should fit you. And if you're normal, extra large, I'd recommend getting the large. I sent one to my my youngest son, um, and he's he's tall, but he's kind of skinny. He's got broad shoulders, but he's kind of skinny. And he was like, Dad, I can't wear it. It's too loose. It's too big. <laughs> so I guess I got to have some, some smaller ones made. Um, but as soon as yeah. we get more sales of these, we are going to have another batch made and then we'll, cool. uh, we'll include mediums as well, but there's the poster. You can get that. It's on sale right now. You can get the t-shirts, all that money. We're just dumping right back into making this podcast even better. Yeah. Uh, trying to get more and more, uh, of the star Raider players on. We've had Trey Taylor rookie sensation on the podcast. We've yeah. had uh, legends on the podcast. We're trying Bruce to get Wilkerson, more. Man. Trying, yeah. trying to get Eric Allen right now. Mm -hmm. Trying to get Tim Brown. Um, trying to get Napoleon Kaufman. Trying to get a whole bunch of these guys that uh, some of the legends. And then mm -hmm. trying to get some more of uh, the current players on as well. So help us out by doing that. One way you can help is if you are not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button because the more subscribers we have on the podcast, when I reach out to these guys, it gives more credibility to them. Also, make sure that you are liking the podcast by hitting that like button. Drop a comment. Where are you guys watching from? I want to know. Like, do I, I've, I've seen we've got guys watching from Japan. We've got guys watching from Mexico. We've got guys mm -hmm. watching from Australia. Um, yeah, for sure. I think it was france or one of the one of the western european countries uh mm -hmm. last week we had somebody drop in and then all over of course the united states and canada so drop a comment let us know you uh your name how long have you been a raiders fan and where yeah, are where you, you watching the raider d podcast from yeah where are you in the uk so, i had some some folks from the uk the other day so question uh, to you, my brother, because I know that you're uh, very much a stats guy. You like to delve into the analytics of things. You got Christian Wilkins. You got Max Crosby. Both of these are high motor guys. Defensive tackle um, has a more of a straight line. So if you have an athletic de defensive tackle, um, they're mm -hmm. going to wreak actually even more havoc on a quarterback than a defensive yeah. end is. They may not always get there and get the sacks. They might not get the high sack totals like a defensive end might get. Um, yeah. But what they do is they run the quarterback into the defensive end because now the quarterback Absolutely. can't step up in the pocket. He's got to step out, and you're going to run into a guy by the likes of Max Crosby or Malcolm Koontz. Again, the Raiders have uh, on this board – it's on Sanjeet's uh, video that he dropped yesterday. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a, it's a great video, great breakdown. I don't always agree with everything Sanjeet says. I'm sure he doesn't agree with everything I say. Actually, he's supposed to be coming on the show. I got to touch base with him again, but I've had some health issues. It slowed everything down this past month. But uh, great video, great breakdown. Top 15 out of all of the defensive ends, we got three of them on the Raiders this year. And that don't forget, we brought back – Adam Butler, John Jenkins, and Trey um, Tucker, or not Trey Tucker, um, uh, our defensive end. Uh, sorry, man, my medications are kicking in. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, our uh -oh. number seven overall draft pick from last year. Uh, oh, uh, Wilson. Yeah. Tyree mm -hmm. Wilson. Tyree Wilson, mm -hmm. yeah. Brain fog, man. Uh, they, got me on, they got me on some gnarly uh, – <laughs> 
anti- it happened to me without the meds, so we're good. Gnar- gnarly anti uh, seizure meds, which basically keep me in a brain fog all all day, so that I don't have a massive seizure, stop breathing, and die. Okay, we'll which we'll sucks. go with that. But yeah, I mean, we'll living is better. Tiring. A little a little brain fog is better than dying, I guess. Uh, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like uh, that but any. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Tyree, yeah, Tyree Will, uh, Wilson, you know, he's going to take that next step, hopefully this year. Um, yeah. You know, he's he's getting that full off season, which he didn't get last year because of his injury. So uh, yeah. Rome 13 says, uh, SoCal repping, uh, been a Raider fan since the 80s. Salute to you, sister. That is awesome. Oh, um, and nice. I'm assuming you're a sister because you do have a picture on your profile of a female. So, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm wrong, please don't hate me. Yeah, uh, it could be a target. Um, OIC says lots of UFOs out here, Raider D. Oh boy, where are you at? I, I, With I, all I, the UFOs, I'm gonna have to come check Roswell, you out. Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he is. I, my grandfather actually lived out there. Uh, really? I lived out there for like a summer. I never seen any UFOs. However, no. uh, I was camping up in the mountains in Utah uh, mm-hmm. when I was 17. And okay. uh, me and my girl at the time, we definitely seen some UFOs in the sky. Oh, boy. No, no, no BS. No, not like, making stuff up. Literally like... <laughs> We're, we're laying in the sleeping bags next to the campfire and just looking up at the sky, wow. completely clear sky, no clouds whatsoever. And these there's just lights that are literally like going zoop, 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 and then zoom and gone. Uh, you can't tell me that's a shooting star because shooting stars don't do that. So, no, that's not a shooting star. No. Uh, and they were moving way too fast to be man-made. So that was uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> Rome says, double check. She's still a female. Loving it. That's funny as hell. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah, you got, you got, it's weird because, you know, I'm 46. Back in my day, which wasn't too long ago, we didn't have mm-hmm. to be ultra careful as to how you label a person. <laughs> Uh, and now, now all of a sudden you have to like be nervous, like to call a man, a man or a woman, a woman. I'm old fashioned. A man's a man, a woman's a woman. If you like it, cool. If you disagree, Hey, everybody's got their own opinion, but, uh, I'm just going to keep it basic. Um, but back to Raiders football. Like, <laughs> like I'm political. I'm, a, I'm again, I'm blaming it on the meds, man. I'm blaming it on the meds. It's the meds. It's Definitely. The meds. But, Definitely. um, so with that, with that being said, with the defensive line that we have, you know, top three of them being in the top 15 defensive linemen in the NFL. Um, do you think Max Crosby gets player of the year? Now that he has help, he's going to get double teams taken away from him and added over to uh, Christian Wilkins. Do you think that he will get snubbed again this year? Or do you think Max Crosby will finally get his roses and get defensive player of the year? I think he's going to have a monster season. I think he's going to, you know, set his personal sack record. I think Christian Wilkins is going to go, is going to go sick also, and Mount Kuntz is going to go sick. They're, they're all going to – I think possibly we could have three double-digit sack guys, which is crazy, right? Um, and then I think he will uh, ceremoniously get snubbed again. He will by far deserve it and then be robbed of it, and they will say – it's because he has all these other talented players on his line, so he doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Because he's a know, Raider. I, I, I got to agree with you, uh, as much as it sucks to have to, to think about that, that the narrative will flip. is going to get. Yeah, it, it was, you know, last year he didn't do enough. This year it's going to be, always oh, got too much help, and that's the only reason why he was successful. Um, and then they'll give it to somebody else who has a ton of help on their line. Absolutely. So, but here's at the end of the day, individual accolades are great. One thing I know about Max Crosby from watching a ton of his interviews as well as watching his Rush podcast is that he doesn't really like getting defensive player of the year is an achievement that he wants. He's right. there's no doubt about that. He wants it and he deserves it. But that's not his ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is winning number 1. And right. he was talking about 
uh, he was on another person's podcast. I forget the dude's name, but he was talking about, you know, the whole controversy of him saying, hey, all options are on the table if Antonio Pierce isn't named head coach. Uh, which was like a vague threat of maybe I leave the Raiders um, because he doesn't want to go through another yeah. bunch of nonsense and rebuild and all that. He's been through that, doesn't want to go through it again. And he made it very clear on this podcast was saying, you know what? It, it's not it's not the way that a lot of people took it or interpreted it. It's I want the Raiders to win. I want to be a Raider for life. I want to retire a Raider, but I want us to win. Mm-hmm. And I don't just want us to win for me. I want yeah. the team to win. And more importantly, I want Mark Davis to have a Super Bowl. Yeah. I want him to have a trophy. And so, because yeah. uh, apparently Mark was a little bit upset about the comment yeah. that he made or whatever. They hashed it out. They're still really tight. Oh, yeah, they're good. They go to basketball games together yeah. and stuff like no, they're, that. They're still good. Mark just said, don't ever do that shit again. Yeah. So. He was just like, you know, uh, <laughs> don't, don't throw me under the bus. Don't, don't put it on me like that, bro. Come on, man. We're closer. Mm-hmm. Now. We're better than that. Don't do that again. And so he clarified it. And you know what I mean? And, and his thing was it's it came from a place not of love or selfish or uh, a place of hate or selfishness, but a place of love. I love the Raiders. I want us to win. And yes. I want Mark Davis to hoist that uh, Lombardi trophy. And so when you have a guy like that who is as talented and hardworking as – Max Crosby is, and then you combine him with other talent like Christian Wilkins, who for a defensive tackle has raw athleticism, motor, bend, everything else. Look at what Nate Hobbs said about Christian Wilkins. He's never seen a dude 300 plus pounds move the way Christian Wilkins moves. It's like a human right. being that yeah. big should not move the way he does. No. Should not have no. to bend the way he does. Yeah. This is one of the things that made Aaron Darnold so great. Yeah. is he was big, but he was supremely athletic. Yeah, and the quickness. So, um, it's, it, it shows up on tape. It's stunning. Even if they don't give him Defensive Player of the Year, I think he'll be just as happy to be hoisting that Lombardi trophy, whether it's this year oh, or yeah. next year. I do think it's coming. I think it's really going to come down to two things. Um, is the NFL going to try and beat us like they mm. usually do? Mm-hmm. Well, my theory on that is that is no longer the case. So <laughs> the hate on the mm-hmm. Raiders is no longer the case because we're not in Oakland anymore. We're in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we went from being one of the poorest teams to now being top five wealthiest teams in just a couple of years by moving cities. And yeah, number one building, in revenue. Yeah, building a multi-billion dollar stadium, all of those things. And so now you have a team that the NFL, which is a business, is looking at not as a team that they don't want to see in the Super Bowl because they're not going to draw as big of a crowd. They're not going to get the type of you know people watching that they want. And they're not going to get the advertisement uh, payouts that they want to get if a team like the Oakland Raiders are in the Super right. Bowl. But now that it's the Las Vegas Raiders – with this sparkling stadium, um, I, I don't think that they're going to try and beat us. And I think if you look at last year, our ridiculous penalties that we usually get called for were down by 80%. Now, maybe yeah. that's Antonio Pierce. Maybe that's the NFL saying, okay, we're going to stop hating against this team because if they we do were... win, okay, cool. Yeah. That's a, a team that we can market. Um, so I think that that piece of the puzzle has finally been solved by having yeah. a state-of-the-art stadium, being in a, a city like Las Vegas um, that's worth a lot of money. That's going to make the NFL more encouraged not to hate on us. So I think we've solved that puzzle. Now the last piece of the puzzle is going to really come down to Aiden O'Connell. And yeah. I know there's Minshew Mania guys out there. I'm telling you right now, Minshew Mania is not a thing. He is not going to be the starting quarterback unless Aiden O'Connell fails <clears throat> in weeks four or five and we're 0-4 oh, oh and four, we're 0-5. Oh um, it's going to be Aiden O'Connell. Mm-hmm. And all he has to do is be a Brad Johnson. Yep. That's it. Exactly. If he exactly. can be a Brad Johnson. Perfect. We're in the playoffs. Exactly. 
Yep. Now, if he could play better than a Brad Johnson, right, we're in Super Bowl. Right. Exactly. Um, well, I just want to make a point that in the first Super Bowl run for the Patriots, Brady was Brad Johnson. Go, go back and look at the stats. He no, wasn't he was, Brady yet. He was not. He was not Brady yet. No, uh, they just the, had the a rest really of the team, team carried it. Yep. Yeah, great team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, that's a great analogy with the Brad Johnson uh, situation. You know, great defense, um, just ready to make make a move. Veteran players uh, at the skill positions that are ready to to make plays as well. Um, yeah, and, and I think what we were number the least penalized team in the league under Antonio Pierce. Um, so, like you said, that problem seems to have been solved. Um, that 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 part of it, we're still going to get the media hate, and that that's great. Bring it, I love it. It's just that's why I'm hot. But uh, yeah, I think we're in a position where if AOC can just kind of do what it looks like his natural progression should be as a quarterback, which is, you know, he's going to have a better command of the offense because he's had a full off season because that is his superpower because. Um, this is a, a better offense to try to learn as a player. Um, and, you know, he's got the kind of the setup around. He's got two of the quarterback's best friends, which is the tight end. He's got a real number one receiver and then a very legit number two, who some people would say is good enough to be a number one, one A on a team, right? Um, you know, uh, an offense is committed to running the football and establishing that and a head coach that believes in him. So he has everything set up for him to take that next step. And if he does, then yes, we're a playoff team. Um, and then, you know, the sky's the limit from there because like, you know, he, he is a grinder. The dude puts in the work. I will say it again. He was eighth string at Purdue or quarterback college and took the starting job. He's not going to quit. He's going to keep working. He'll get better every year. And so that's what you ask for. Um, that, that's uh, I think that's why, it's kind of frustrating that he's being so discounted because of how hard he worked. Right. So, you know, well, here's the, here's the thing that I love about it for me. And that's why I titled it the way it is uh, for this video, which is so much hate fuels a beast. Um, It's the same thing with Aiden O'Connell. He takes the discredit he gets. He takes the disrespect and it drives him to just keep getting better and to, mm-hmm. to outwork everybody and just win that yep. starting position and, and be good. Um, same thing with Christian Wilkins. It's the same thing that has fueled Max Crosby's entire career. Um, you know, we, when he came in, fourth-round draft pick, everybody was saying he's, you know, a rotational player, may not even be in the NFL within three years, blah, blah, blah subpar hand fighting skills subpar motor they got that one wrong for sure wow um and he's just used it to drive his his entire career to be as successful as he's been and so i think the same thing i think we have we have a coach who is an undrafted uh professional football player linebacker uh he was discounted and he made his way to becoming a Pro Bowler and a Super Bowl champion and a captain of a Super Bowl champion team. Uh, gets the utmost highest praises from his former Super Bowl champion quarterback, Eli Manning, mm-hmm. saying that this dude was so smart that he would change plays on the defense as the middle linebacker yeah. uh, on the fly because he knew what I was going to do when we were in practice together, right? And he said and it's the same thing that he did against Tom Brady during the Super Bowl. So if you actually go back and look at it, on the defense, you got like guys like Michael Stro- uh, Strahan. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I can never pronounce his name. Omni Warrior, what, whatever his name was. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I can never pronounce that dude's name. It's just too crazy. Um, those are the guys that were getting all of the hype. But if you go back and actually look at it, he had 11 tackles, uh, Antonio Pierce did, in the Super Bowl. And he was the one running the defense. So he was calling all the defensive audibles. Yeah, he audibled Tom Brady. And so if you look at that's who our head coach is, an underdog, a guy who was uh, discredited, disrespected, 
mm-hmm. and became you know the the top uh, of his of his career, winning a Super Bowl, being captain of the team, Pro Bowler, all of that stuff, and again was disrespected uh, as a coach last year. Uh, where many people are saying that he has no X's and O's. Go back and listen to what Eli Manning had to say about him. This guy <laughs> yeah. understands X's and O's. And yeah. for all of the talking heads to say, well, you know, he's just a player's coach. He's not like an X and a, he's not one he's of the middle linebacker. Or, like you don't, you have to call defense as a middle linebacker. I don't, I don't know if people, if everyone is understanding it, that's the quarterback of the defense. It's not a joke. It's like literally the quarterback of the defense. Like it's not a, Why? it's not an analogy. It's like they have to actually call the place in audible. Perfect <laughs> example of that is how many previous quarterbacks in college um, and some even in the NFL become offensive coordinators. It's the yeah. same thing with the exactly. middle linebacker. Yeah. Those guys eventually become defensive, defensive coordinators. coordinators. Yeah, because they're, the they're the X's and O's guys. Right? He's got the speaker in his ear that he's talking to the head coach. That's that guy. Yeah, that's yeah. that guy. He did that, and he beat Tom Brady. And you're going to tell me he doesn't understand schemes? Right. And so as a and leader, you see when he took over, yeah. everybody's saying, oh, it was because of Patrick Graham. Yes, it is a partly because of yeah, Patrick Graham. It is his defense. However, when did the Raiders' defense actually start to become dominant? The second Antonio Pierce took over. What changes did Antonio Pierce make to that defense to make them better? A couple of things that I can name right off the top that both Patrick Graham said as well as Antonio Pierce said, which is he instantly took the chains off of Patrick Graham. It is no holds bar. Open up the defense. Let them fly. Number two, what he did is he went and got Jack Jones as soon as the Patriots were dumb enough to cut the next Deion Sanders. (laughs) Number three thing he did is he went to the players and he said, I trust your instincts. We're going to give you the plays. Be smart about it. But if you know what's about to happen, if your instinct tells you from all the game tape that you've watched, all of our practices, everything, if you know what they're about to do, go get it. Jump it. Go get it. Yeah. Jack Jones pick six. Against the Chargers, Michael mm-hmm. Jordan esque, Jack yes. Jones pick six, stare down yes. of Patrick Mahomes on Christmas Day. That's what you want to hear. Malcolm dude. Kuntz taking off yes. as soon as Antonio Pierce becomes head coach. Because yes. Malcolm Kuntz, one, wasn't getting the playing time that he should have been getting because we had um, our former head coach, Josh McDaniels, insisting that Tyree Wilson be out there. Instead of Malcolm Coons. He didn't believe in Malcolm Coons because he doesn't know how to evaluate players. Well, Antonio Pierce does. Antonio Pierce knew that Malcolm Coons was way more ready for that that, uh, first string position than Tyree Wilson was as a rookie. And so he immediately switched that up. Malcolm's getting the snaps and he let Malcolm go free because, again, everybody was playing in these little boxes that Josh mm-hmm. McDaniels put them in. And yeah. Antonio Pierce said, no, the chains are off. Go hunt. Go get them. And you see the difference. And so all the disrespect on the team, on Coach Antonio Pierce, I, I see it in the comments come in from some of the so-called Raiders fans who are really more Chiefs fans than Raiders fans, it appears, saying that, Antonio Pierce won't even have a job come 2025. The Raiders are going to go 0-17. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. First of all, how are we going to go 0-17 when the Denver Broncos don't have a quarterback? They have a rookie. We play the Broncos, never, right? He's That's... never played a snap, and they got rid of their best receiver, and they got rid of a bunch of other players. Yeah, they didn't good. really have a good offseason. They certainly didn't yeah. have a good free agency. And the same exact thing has happened to the L.A. Chargers where, yes, you still have Justin Herbert there, but you got rid of his two main targets. Um, Yeah, they did. brought in a psychopath as head coach. They brought in a psycho as a head coach. They did get my boy Brendan Rice, but, again, he's going to be a rookie. um, So he's not going to be a big-time target for for Herbert. And then the other thing is Herbert, 
I, I don't think he's ever completed 17 straight games in a season. The dude's no. always getting hurt. And I still have questions about, like, Herbert in clutch time, big games. Like, where's the where, – I just uh, where's the signature victory? You know, where's the where's the I don't know. It's just, I'm still looking for the sauce there. Like he has a lot of ability and skill and all that stuff. I just I haven't seen that extra something from him. And then I think this this Harbaugh stuff is going to break him because they're going to turn him into like I don't know, Kirk Cousins or something. <laughs> Here's old Frank <laughs> Perez. I swear to God, this dude is a Chiefs fan. <laughs> I'm not even going to read it. I just put it up on the screen. <laughs> okay. Well, good, good job, Frank. You're doing your thanks negative for, thing there. Thanks for telling the YouTube algorithm that we're getting lots of integration or uh, interaction on the podcast. Reader Ryan is starting mess. Reader Ryan, dude, don't don't start messing the comments, okay? Like, let's not talk about he who shall remain nameless. Um, the rookie... With no experience or <laughs> I gotta help. put that on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too soon? Is it too soon? Oh, they drafted Joe Alt to help protect him, so I guess they're trying. Oh no, sorry, I put the wrong one on the screen. There it is. There it this is. This one. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that too soon? But uh, hot. You know what, man? Um, I still think, you know, he's scattered. I, what he is, but uh, it takes more than one player, and you know, an organization can definitely uh, affect the outcome for a player, obviously. So, yeah, I just, I mean, I wish he got to the NFC and a team with more talent um, around him. I, I actually kind of feel bad for him because I think his coach uh, is going to get fired, and I think that his team is pretty talentless, and I think that they're going to blame him, and so. You know, <laughs> situations, man. You know, it's uh, windows open and they close and sliding doors and all that jazz. But, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, no matter what happens, I mean, he's still going to be a rookie. The yeah. CJ Strouds of the world are unicorns. They don't happen. Yeah, um, it's rare. On a regular yeah. basis. I don't gonna see struggle. Bo Nix being a CJ Stroud for the Broncos. And the Broncos Probably still not. don't have a defense. Um, that can match the weapons that the Raiders have or the Chiefs or even the Chargers. Um, so I think Denver's going to probably be last in the division. Chargers will be third. Chiefs will be second. Raiders will be first. Yeah. I now agree. That's, that's, that's a big thing, and I, I'm going off of history. How many teams in the NFL history have ever re, uh, three-peated? Have what? Three-peated. Oh, that just doesn't, no. Not only that, but if you go back and you look at Super Bowl teams who've won two in a row, even with Tom Brady, um, their their year that they're trying to three-peat is usually a horrible year for that team. And so I don't see that the Chiefs got better. They lost Sneed. Um they still don't have a dominant wide receiver since Tyreek uh, left. They have Which Travis Rice Kelsey. Yeah. You know, you, you got tra Travis Kelsey, and, and that's really, as far as your playmakers, you, you got Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, still, they brought in Hollywood you know, Brown. So Yeah, they're, they're still, even with Hollywood Brown, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe under under Patrick Mahomes, he might actually have uh, a Pro Bowl year. We'll, we'll see if that happens or not. Um, mm -hmm. But I I think that the Raiders now defensively were better than the Chiefs. Offensively, we have more weapons. Now we don't have the quarterback that the Chiefs have. But we have more overall weapons with our yeah. two phenomenal tight ends, with Devontae Adams, Jacoby oh, yeah. Myers being a workhorse. And then if you listen to what Coach has to say, Trey, Trey Tucker. Tucker is a whole different level so far in this offseason. I told so you so. If Trey Tucker 
takes a big leap in in year two. Um, you already know who's going to get the double teams. That's going to be Devonte Adams, right? Um, but now it's it's any defense that's going to oppose the Raiders is pick your poison. You want to double team Devonte? Okay, we'll just throw the ball over the middle to Michael Mayer and Brock Bowers over and over and over again, and just keep getting first downs until we get into the red zone. Or if you want to push up and try and defend those dudes, we'll just hit you over, you know, uh, down the field with a 40 year, mm-hmm. 40 yard bomb to Trey Tucker, who just outran your entire defense. Or we'll hand the ball off to Jacoby Myers, who will then throw the ball 40 yards down the field to Trey Tucker. <laughs> so it's like pick your poison. Which which way do you want to go? And I think for the first time in over 20 years, the Raiders finally have a complete team on all three phases. And most importantly, we have depth, which the Raiders have never had. We have superstars, we have stars, and then we have quality players in abundance. And so that's, that's why I'm most excited about the Raiders this year and why I think we win the AFC West. I think the 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 pressure is going to be on the Chiefs to three peat to be the first team to ever do it, and that's mm-hmm. a lot of pressure to to have. And remember, yeah. I mean they they struggled a lot last year. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah, I don't think the Raiders are going to struggle this year. Yeah, um, I think that it's about matchups. Um, you you build your team to win your division, right? Um, we are a physical defense um, built around having the best defensive line in the NFL. I think it's been proven out now, right? Go look at the stats. Three guys in the top 15, right? Um, we're going to hit guys. Um, we're going to aggressively attack the football. Um, and for a team that's built around, you know, an aging tight end, uh, a running back that's nondescript, and receivers who are small and have problems catching the football, um, I think that we are ready to, to do something against the Chiefs. Right? Um, and then once somebody figures out how to beat them, right, and it shows the, the formula, other teams copy that. Right? Um, you know, when the Niners got figured out, it was they started getting smacked around. People realized that what you need to do is hit the receivers. Hit them in the mouth. And that's how you beat them. Right. Um, so we have the skill in the secondary to do that now, and we're going to be hitting the quarterback in the mouth a lot. So I, I think this is going to be a big year for uh, for the NFL to kind of the press to kind of wake up to what we are. So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, coming into this season, the Raiders are fired up. Um I think Luke Getze is fired up to prove that he is a top-tier offensive coordinator. He got a bad rap in Chicago because, well, let's be honest, he just had a bad quarterback. Not an athletically bad quarterback. Justin Fields is an extraordinarily athletic talent. I just don't think Justin Fields had the work ethic or maybe not even I, – I don't want to say he didn't have the work ethic because, I don't know, maybe he was the first person in the building, last one to leave. Um but maybe he just wasn't able to make the right decisions being smart with the football, which shows on film that he struggled with that. Versus now, Luke Getze has a quarterback who is shown that he's very cerebral, very intelligent, mm-hmm. and um, his last five games, he really cleaned up being smart with the football, moving in the pocket, getting out of the mm-hmm. pocket, making plays. Yep. Nine touchdowns, only one interception. Um, you know, he was second uh, of all rookie quarterbacks in the NFL last year, only to C.J. Stroud, and and really not even by that much um, mm-hmm. that he came in second place. And so that was with him coming in midseason. So he didn't even get all the first-team reps that C.J. Stroud had during the offseason. He, right. didn't, he didn't get uh, to – really work out the kinks in in weeks one through three and then start to shine. He gets to do that this year. Yes, there's a competition with Minshew. I get it, and I understand why the Raiders brought him in. Minshew wants to play. 
Minshew wants to be the starter. He wants to win games. Um, and he's, he has confidence in himself, and that's great. You want a backup who's going to drive your starting quarterback. Um, you know, unless you have a quarterback like Tom Brady who doesn't need somebody to drive him. He just drives himself. But I think Aiden O'Connell is got that little bit of Tom Brady in him where he's going to drive himself, whether Minshew's there or not. It's just a, yeah, little, bit, a, it's a little bit more now because now yeah. – I think he ha- he realizes that hey I I could lose my job here and if I lose it it's it's done it's over I may not get another opportunity to be a starting quarterback in the NFL on any other team uh, because I'll always have this stigmatism that I lost to Gardner Minshew who's a career backup quarterback um, not saying that Minshew is bad or anything but that's yeah. how the NFL looks at Gardner Minshew as a career backup right. quarterback. And yeah. then that would put the stigmatism on Aiden O'Connell, and it'd be hard for him to overcome that at that point. So he has to win it. I think at this point, Aiden O'Connell has – the Raiders have done everything to give him all the success in the world. Uh, yeah. We drafted well. We got him more weapons with Brock Bowers. We got him protection with JPJ, who is an absolute animal, a monster. Um you know, now we'll see if it pans out in the NFL, but the attitude is there. The technique is there. The footwork is mm-hmm. there for him to be a mm-hmm. great guard in the NFL. Um, one of the critiques on him is maybe he might be a little bit undersized as a guard in the NFL. 323 I, pounds. I, I like think they're talking, they're talking about more about his length. I, I just seen a report a on guard? His, his undersized. Um, yeah. You don't need long arms at guard. It's you not don't. a thing. And that's why we're going to play him at guard instead. Yeah, if he's playing tackle, but he's not a tackle. tackle. Um, but I, I think that he's he's got everything that you want to see. He's got that violent nature uh, for an offensive lineman, and that's what you need yeah. in the NFL. He, he, so. he has stuff on tape that I literally have never seen an offensive lineman do to another player. Like he's literally ragdolling defensive linemen. Yeah. ragdolling them. It's insane. <laughs> like, now it is, I mean, it is a completely different level when you get to the NFL. Yeah. Uh, don't but it's still college. See that. Yeah, yeah, don't expect to see him doing that on a daily basis in the NFL. No. As Not until rookie. like year two or three. Yeah, but as he as he grows in, uh, a perfect example is Andre James. Um, mm-hmm. Even last year, he got dogged on, on a few plays. But if you look at his rookie year, like it's night and day difference. He's gotten so much better. Yeah. Um, still not an elite player yet. Maybe he will become. He's still not mm-hmm. a, a top tier center. He's probably not, you know, even in the top fifteen. At this He's point. actually a top ten center. I'll argue that with you. I don't have the energy or the strength to argue. <laughs> We'll wait for another day when you're feeling more. I energized. would say I would say Andre James right now. Um, I would put him between top sixteen to twenty, somewhere between sixteen to twenty. Um, I think one I of the issues that. with him is um, he he does on a lot of plays. He gets beat by power moves. Uh, he gets pushed back out of his position, out of his stance too easily. Um, he, he can. I wouldn't say on a lot of plays. I would say that, like, if he does get beat, it's typically that. Um, and by exceptionally strong players like, say, a Chris Jones or, you know, uh, you know, somebody who's, like, just immovable in the run game, right, a huge nose tackle or something like that, those are going to be the issues that you're going to see with him. But then what he gives you as far as his ability to move um, and, you know, get to the second level uh, as a pass blocker and then as a run blocker in, like, every other situation uh, is why he's statistically a top 10 center. I think I can prove that, that, that point. But I hear Raider fans about that. I think moving to the system we're running, we're running now under Getze, which is a wide zone system, is going to take advantage more of what uh, Andre James is good at, right, instead and- of forcing him to do things he's not good at. That's what I was I was going to bring up is 
Um, even in the draft, we drafted guys who are better at outside zone blocking versus power blocking. And McDaniel's offense was all power blocking, but we didn't actually have the linemen to match up to his offense, which is why the line struggled so much. And if you look at it, a lot of the line was the same under McDaniel's as, it, as what it was under Gruden, but the offensive line under Gruden played better. Why? Because mm-hmm. Gruden's system was more mixed towards zone blocking, um, yeah. outside zone blocking versus the power. And so he drafted those smaller, quicker guys um, where McDaniels wanted bigger, stronger guys. And why does McDaniels want bigger, stronger guys? Because he wants a Tom Brady quarterback that's going to stand like a statue and just throw the ball down the field. And so you need those big, strong guys who can hold on for that extra two seconds. Um, And that just didn't work out with the offensive line that we had. I think now what you're going to see is – Again, we're going to see a lot of screen passes with Luke Getze's system, mm-hmm. which is a yeah. best best friend to a quarterback. Uh, gives them confidence. You're getting completions. You're picking up first downs. All of that stuff, they're easy to do. Um, mm-hmm. But it also draws defenses in so that when you want to hit them over the top, you can hit them over the top. It also makes yep. defenses a little bit more hesitant to immediately try and attack the quarterback because it might be a screen. So there's a lot, a lot more quarterback friendliness to where you don't have to be Tom Brady and you don't have to have Tom Brady's offensive line to make it work. And we had exactly. either one of those under McDaniels. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, a much better situation this year with Andre James. I think he'll, he'll be better in this new system than he was under McDaniels. Again, because under McDaniels, he was being asked to be a power center. And so he would go up against, you know, nose tackles who were stronger than him. And yeah. we just push him back. And that would that would cause the, the pocket to collapse. So I think he's going to be a lot better this year. We'll see if he's going to become a star center. Um, but I do believe uh, as long as Miller's shoulder is okay, he'll have another Pro Bowl year. I think mm-hmm. DPJ is possibly uh gonna get a whole bunch of snaps this year i think he's gonna end up winning maybe by mid-season i think he'll win uh, the starting position um let's see if dylan parham can take uh that next step um huge and- he's move to like he's been he's been moved to the right guard position like i said on draft day i think uh as soon as we've got jpj i told you guys jpj is gonna be left guard he's gonna be right guard so that's happened um that's huge um, Dylan Parham is a much better right guard than left guard. Go check his stats in college, all that good stuff. Um, so him moving over there is a big deal. And Thayer Munford is a better player than people are giving credit for. I think he's going to be one of the better right tackles in the, in the NFL. So That's what I was going to say, too, is um, Coach Antonio Pierce is big up there in Munford and the progress that he's made. Um, I mean, obviously you're going against two of the best uh, – Defensive lineman and Max Crosby and Christian yeah, Wilkins, sure. right? Um, so that all and that you know, you're going to lose against those guys, but you're going to win reps against those guys, and all that's yeah. going to do is make you better. And so, when it comes week one, it doesn't matter who you throw against him; he's already gone against the best. He's seen the yeah. best hand checks and hand fighting and the spin moves yeah. and the swim moves and the underarm hooks. He's seen everything Max Crosby has, and he's one of the best at hand fighting, checking, and moves and, and uh, motor and all of that stuff. So yeah. uh, I think he'll only get better. Hopefully we'll see. If that happens, Aiden O'Connell showed it last year. If he has time in the pocket, he's going to tear you up. When he doesn't have time in the pocket, that's when he made some mistakes. Started to clean that up. Started to maneuver in the pocket better. Get out of the pocket and make plays. That was really good. If he can continue that this year, great. Um, mm-hmm. And if the the offensive line and Luke Getze can keep the defense on their toes to mm-hmm. where he can step back and he can chuck the ball 40, 50 yards down the field to Trey Tucker, Devontae Adams. It's going to be a very fun season to watch. Yeah. You know, he has a reportedly stronger arm, which is awesome. We'll take that. Um, 
Also in the breakdown of the offense, when looking at tape, Getze's offense has a lot more out for the quarterback. Um, the check down um, options on both sides of the field. I know that's getting in the weeds a little bit, but um, not uh, not every offense has a check down um, option to to every side of the field. You may have a check down that's literally like behind you in your read progression. And so you've got to kind of like spin backwards and then locate your check down, which is a lot, uh, can be difficult and it causes interceptions, things like that. Um, you know, if you got Tom Brady in that offense, it doesn't matter. But in this offense, it's more friendly. Um, you're going to see a lot more, uh, you know, fulfilled reads and ability to kind of get to um, easier uh, answers if the first read is not there or if there's pressure and that sort of stuff. Um, so that'll help him some. And then just having being more familiar with the offense will help also. So exactly. I want to make that point. So before we wrap up today, guys, just so you know, the sale on the T-shirts, these are dry fit T-shirts. These are not cheap print on demand. We actually had these manufactured for really our nice. company. Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to go get them, the sale is continuing on. I think right now they're on sale uh, for $14.95. Uh, retail price is thirty nine ninety five, so you don't want to miss out on that. It's over sixty seven percent off. I think sixty four, sixty seven percent off. Um, that sale is only going to continue as long as supplies last. We have a certain number of shirts that we need to sell over the next two weeks so that we can make more orders. Um, once we hit that number, unfortunately, they will have to go back up because at this price, not really making any money. We're just using that money to get more shirts in different sizes mm -hmm. as well as we got some more designs that are going to be coming out and we are working on a hat design as well so help out the channel help out the company go and get your shirt while they are on a huge huge discount where literally we're just not even really making any money um but we're going to reinvest that so that we can get you guys some more awesome gear for the raiders yes. it is the black Raiders official this is our yes. own brand so Love to have you guys sporting that. Go and get them right now. Just win, baby. Max Crosby t-shirt silhouettes. Dry fit, so it's going to keep you, it's going to wick away that moisture. Um, yes. It's all high quality stuff. Again, nice we don't shirt. do any of that, that garbage uh, print on demand stuff that you see on other channels because I check their stuff and it's like, oh my goodness, you're charging $39 for a cotton t-shirt that looks terrible. Just by putting i think they'll, they'll put like uh raider nation for life or something like that just in the four letters and it's like come on man let's do it for real so that's why we started our own company black rain official go and get them right now there's also posters available you can get the big posters which you can more see coming the thing. uh okay. hot beavers if you have not subscribed to his channel go and check out his channel fantastic videos fantastic breakdowns he has been with me pretty much since the beginning of my journey. So we often are doing these podcasts together. He is also a contributing writer to the Black Rain official newsletter, uh, mm -hmm. which because of my health issues, we haven't been putting out, but we are working on trying to get back on track with that. And hopefully my health issues are going to, we'll figure yes. out what's going on. Hopefully the, yeah. I mean, I've had, I don't know, seven doctors now, hundred blood <laughs> tests, CT scans, yeah. MRI scans, all kinds of stuff. They got me on anti-seizure medication. Um, we still don't have an answer at this point. Yeah. Best guess scenario right now is it's a complication of a particular vaccine that the entire country and the entire world were forced to take. Um, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully it's not that. We'll, but uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I appreciate everybody being here. I know I haven't been live yes. as much uh, as usual. Again, I've had some severe health issues uh, all month since the 1st of June. Trying my best. Like right now, my, my energy is like, doing guys. I'm down to about 30%. I started this live, I was at like 70. Now I'm down to like 30. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut out for the night. Uh, go lay down and rest for a little bit. Hot, I appreciate you as always. Love Man, you, my brother. Love sure. the Raiders. You guys know how we end these live streams each and every time. No matter how I'm feeling, say it with me. Raiders! Raiders! Just win.